fashion accessories and trims unit 3 accessories for the head and neck module 2 hello and welcome to the unit 3 of fashion accessories and trims in this unit we have been discussing accessories that are worn on the head and the neck in module 1 we discussed hats as a continuation in module 2 we will explore the world of hair accessories by the end of this module students will be able to review the history and evolution of wigs and hair extensions in styling they would be able to define hair accessories such as clips barrettes hairbands and combs they would also be able to create hair accessories using fashion trims accessories and jewelry can be classified in many different ways in this course accessories and jewelry will be categorized based on not just the usage but also where in the body they are worn or carried this unit details the fashion accessories that are worn on the head hair face and neck like hats eyewear hair accessories and neckties in this particular module we will discuss hair accessories like wigs hair extensions and hair clips bands and other sorts of hair embellishments moving on let us talk about wigs a wig is a head covering of hair it could be made of real that is human or animal hair or synthetic hair wigs are worn for a variety of reasons they can be used to disguise baldness hair loss and skin conditions of the head like psoriasis they can also be worn to create a look or to make a fashion statement in the past it was very common for both men and women of higher classes to shave their heads and wear full wigs made up of human hair or sometimes in ancient cultures even date palm fibers now let us look at the history and evolution of wigs i would like to talk about the evolution in terms of a timeline let us begin with ancient and medieval history hair has always been an important part of human beauty wigs were used in ancient civilizations of the sumerians and the assyrians they were curled permed and at times even had ringlets on them in the sides in ancient egyptian culture wigs were very popular and worn by men women and sometimes even children the primary function of a wig as a headdress for special occasions such as ceremonies and banquets was not unrecorded wigs were made from strips of linen human hair and wool which was braided and held together with beeswax wigs were curled or sometimes made with a succession of plaits only queens or noble ladies could wear wigs of long hair separated into three parts this was famously referred to as the godress you might recollect it from the paintings of queen cleopatra a close study of roman costumes also reveals the use of wigs such as diadem wigs for addition of volume to existing hair there are also stories of how noble women used to maintain some slaves only to harvest their beautiful hair it could well be a rumor rumor or not humankind has long held a fascination for beautiful hair 
wigs and hair extensions have played a very important role in the ancient past. Orthodox Jewish women even today wear the shaitel which is a full wig or a half wig to conform to Jewish law. These are worn only by the married women as hair is considered to be sexually attractive. Now let us discuss wigs in the 17th and 18th century. As we fast forward to the 17th century, the English term wig was derived from the word periwig and a new term was coined. Before that, wigs were worn by those who were covering their patchy baldness. That most of the times was a result of syphilis. In 1624, Louis the Thirteenth covered his prematurely balding skull with long, dark, wavy, locked hairpiece. It became a huge fashion sensation. It was taken forward by his son, King Louis XIV. Perukes, another name for wigs at this period, became fashion symbols. From this period, until the French Revolution, wigs advertised aristocracy and power. Wigs were accepted as the required dress for nobles all over Europe. And in order to supply those wigs, the first wig guild was founded in France in 1665. You must have heard of the term big wig. In this period, this term or the word big wig was coined to describe snobs who could afford such big, puffy perukes. In the 17th century, the English wore full bottom wigs and Ramillies wigs as well. The Ramillies wig featuring a sausage roll curls at each ear with a reminder of hair tied at the back of the neck with a black ribbon was a version of the pigtail wigs. They also came to be known as campaign wigs. You might recollect seeing pictures of some of these wigs in old movies that talked about the British invasion of India or in portraits that talk about the British aristocracy. Wigs were made to look white. To achieve this result, they were powdered with wheat flour and perfumed with jasmine, orris root and bergamot. Powdering made the wigs quite heavy. As time passed by, Englishmen returning from travels in France and Italy started a trend called macaroni fashion. Macaroni fashion included the usage of a wide variety of tall wigs. These macaroni men were wildly ridiculed as caricatures. If you've heard the Yankee Doodle song, you might recollect a reference to the macaroni men. In the 18th century, women began to wear towering headdresses. Wigs, rolls, pads and bumps were commonly used to create structures. These were later embellished not just with fruits and flowers, but also items like model ships, farm animal models or more such elaborate arrangements. These wigs or hair structures would be plastered with pomatum and powdered white, violet, pink or blue with starch in order to match their status and attire. Since they were complicated to make, they were left untouched, not for days, but for weeks, sometimes even months. So these became havens for lice and fleas. There is also a popular cartoon of a rat 
living inside such a towering hairstyle so which this meant that these hairstyles became very itchy so back scratches which had small ivory claws on the end of long sticks were inserted into the headdress in a desperate effort to stop the itching however it became unbearable and towards the end of the century hairstyles became simple and hats were favored along with natural and simple hairdos wigs in the 19th and 20th century after the french revolution wigs fell out of fashion however they came back in the victorian era the victorian and edwardian era demanded a variety of wigs rolls and transformations for both men and women even american presidents john adams and james monroe used to wear powdered wigs but it is to be noted that george washington the first president of america had real long hair which he used to braid into a ponytail and wear in the 20th century hollywood glamorized wigs wigs were used to craft a variety of personas different hairstyles were used to create new and different looks for the actors wigs also ensured that the older actors could continue to play younger roles they required less maintenance than real hair when it came to creating dramatic hairstyles until the early 1950s most wigs were made by hand however the invention of machine made washable nylon and acrylic wigs in hong kong particularly led to cheap mass produced wigs that are now flooding the market wigs in the 21st century in the 21st century wigs have become more comfortable to wear they are no longer cumbersome they are lighter created with technological advancements and made to suit different face shapes and crown structures celebrities like beyonce rihanna and lady gaga have made wigs extremely fashionable and so does katy perry dc and marvel movies and tv shows such as game of thrones have been a big influence in appearance of wigs at cosplay events and comic con gone are the days when people used to turn up in a bad wonder woman wig today wigs are available at many different prices and easily both online and in stores that it is at the reach of regular people also due to air and water pollution hair loss is a huge issue at the present so it is not uncommon to see people wearing wigs on a regular basis thus it has become an accepted part of the society moving on let us take a look at the different types of wigs firstly the classification based on the kind of material that is natural hair wig and synthetic hair wig natural hair wigs are made of variety of hair such as human hair horse hair wool or even buffalo hair generally there are four kinds of human hair that is used in wigs these differ in their provenance that is they come from china india indonesia and europe the highest quality natural hair wigs are hand tied with strands matched together so that the shafts of the hair are all pointed in the same direction this makes it easier to style the hair now i would like to introduce you to another term remi remi hair wig refers to human hair wigs that have cuticles still attached at the ends they aren't processed 
also known as virgin hair and cut hair wigs. These feel very soft to touch and have very less tangling and thereby more expensive than the other real hair wigs. Moving on, synthetic wig. Synthetic wigs are made up of synthetic fibers such as acrylic and nylon. They are machine made, mass produced and very durable. They can be custom dyed or purchased in pre-made styles. You can get wigs with hair that is curly, wavy or even poker straight. A lot of these wigs can be styled at home with proper care. Now in terms of wig making technique, wigs can also be classified. There are two main types of wigs in this regard. Machine stitched weft wig and hand tied lace wig. Using lace allows for a more natural looking wig because of the flesh colored lace that is used as a base. In lace wigs, there are full lace, lace front and monofilament wigs. Full lace wigs may have a base entirely made up of lace and have urethrain strips for adhesives. Full lace wigs can be used to do even updos and ponytails as opposed to lace front wigs. This is the kind of wig that you would mostly see celebrities wearing. Lace front or lace frontal wigs. These are made up of a less fragile material which is less susceptible to ripping or tearing than the full lace. It allows the viewer wearer to choose a hairline. But if a lace wig, that is if a lace front wig is pulled back, it becomes very obvious that it is a wig. Monofilament wigs. These have a base of very fine lace material. It could be of a nylon and a mesh blend. This type is great for anyone who might have a sensitive scalp. Monofilament materials take on the color of the person's scalp when born. Hair weaves and extensions. Weaves and hair extensions are methods of adding length and volume to hair. Both synthetic and human hair can be used for these processes. Now you might ask me, what is the difference between a weave and a hair extension? In a weave, a person's real, that is existing hair, is braided in rows or cornrows. Then, wets of extra hair are added by sewing them to the braids with a needle. They can be also attached strand by strand, where the hair is divided into small sections. Each section is braided an inch or more, with the extension then sewn or wrapped with a thread to secure it. Micro thin wets can also be sewn on loose hair. Weaves made in this way by a trained hairstylist can typically last for 6 to 10 weeks if cared for properly. They need to be touched up every 2 to 4 weeks. While no glue is used while weaving, the tightness of the braids can cause pain, redness of the scalp and even hair breakage. Therefore, it is essential to have condition treatments done before, during and after the weave. Special oils, shampoos and conditioners are required to maintain them. Hair extensions, on the other hand, are attached strand by strand to natural hair. They can be attached using microlinks, tapes or adhesives. Wets of hundreds of hair shafts are glued to natural hair close to the scalp. More expensive processes also use a keratin protein bond. It is a time-consuming and a labor-intensive process. 
removal can also be very painful and the glue used can damage one's natural hair. To avoid this, hair extensions with clip-ons or tapes can be used. Though all weaves and hair extensions are temporary, ones that are clipped on last even a shorter duration. Typically, they might last only a day. These could be added on for a shoot or for a party and removed at the end of the day. While wigs are often worn only for a short duration and like I mentioned about hair extensions with clip-ons removed at the end of the day, weaves last longer. So depending on the kind of look that you want and the duration for which you want it to last, you can either go in for wigs, hair extensions or weaves. Today, comfortable and easy to wear choices are available in all three categories. There are hairstylists available in almost all major cities who are trained to apply hair extensions and weaves on your hair. Hair accessories. A hair accessory is a tool that helps secure hair in a hairstyle. It can be used to keep the hair out of eyes, add other extensions and or decorate the hair. Thus, hair accessories are functional or decorative objects that can be wrapped, tied, twisted and inserted to the hair. They are available in a variety of shapes, sizes, materials and forms. They can be pins, combs, clips or bands. The choice of hair accessories could depend on religious and social importance of the hair styling and grooming along with the fashion trends of the period. Now let us look at types of hair accessories that are available in the market. Now, Hair accessories can be classified into pins, clips, combs and ties. First, let us discuss the kind of accessories that comes in the pins category. The pins category is the most commonly found hair accessories in the market. You all might have seen the most simple hair pin also known as the bobby pin. This is a piece of wire that is folded over in the center. The edges are often rounded. The waves on the top side of the bobby pin helps keep your hair in place. Though it is called as a bobby pin, it almost functions like a clip. The next item on the list is spin pin. A spin pin as the name refers to is a kind of pin that looks almost like a spring. It is twisted piece of metal that keeps hairstyles such as hair buns in place. The third category is that of bridal pins or fancy hair pins. You must have seen brides wearing chignon hairstyles with little beads or little rhinestones visible on the surface of the hair. These are bridal pins. Sometimes more elaborate arrangements of twisted strands of pearls are also used. At the end of this module, I would be demonstrating a bridal hair pin for you. The next type of hair accessory is that of clips. Hair clips are easily available in the market and they range from being thin narrow strips of metal or plastic to big catch clips. 
The first item on the list is a typical hair clip. This has a catch at the lower end and the top of the clip is often decorated with a piece of plastic, metal. Now it could be studded with stones or it could be embellished with other artificial elements. The next hair accessory that we are going to look at is a slide or a bobby slide. Sometimes a bobby pin and a slide are commonly mistaken. A slide is something that slides over and catches hair with a lock, whereas a bobby pin does not have a lock in the end. Butterfly hair clips. These are catch clips that are in shaped in the form of a butterfly. The wing like structures on either side make the hairstyle look prettier. Barrets or snaps. Barrets are once again most commonly found in the market. Available in not just black and neutrals, they are also available in a variety of colors and textures. These are typically used to hold sections of hair from falling onto your face or loose strands of hair from disturbing your entire hairdo. The next category is a crocodile clip. A crocodile clip is a metal clip that has teeth. It is often one-sided. The clip opens with a jaw like this, thereby its name crocodile clip. Final item on this list are claws. Claws may refer to any other kinds of catch clips that have long pointed tongs or claws that help hold the hair in place. The third type of hair accessory comes under combs. Combs, as you know, used to comb, straighten and tease your hair into a hairstyle. Hair combs are such accessories that help keep your hair in place while embellishing them at the same time. Hair combs are commonly used in Christian bridal hairdos to add flowers or to make sure that you attach a veil to your low bun. Hair combs may also be glued to the end of pill boxes or fascinators that we saw in the practical demonstration section of unit 1 of this module. Other kinds of combs include burn it clips or combs. The third category includes spikes and sticks. Though these are typically not combs, these are also used to tease, confirm and fix hair in place. The fourth type of hair accessory can be classified under bands and ties. A hair band, sorry for the misnomer, is not a band of fabric but it is a length of metal or plastic that has been shaped into a horseshoe design. In the practical demonstration of fascinator in module 1, I have used a plastic hair band as my base. Hair bands could also be made up of fabric and elastic. Hair bands are such tools that are used to keep the front side of the hair from falling onto your face. It pushes the hair backwards. The next item on the list is scrunchie or an elastic band. Most commonly used in tropical countries to keep your hair off the neck, scrunchies or elastic bands could be made up of fabric or plasticated bands that can be used to tie your hair into ponytails 
It can be also used to secure your braids. Now, the next item on this list are ponio bands. Ponio, though, is a trademark that refers to a particular kind of a hair band. Ponios, as a commercial name, refer to an elasticated band with a metal ring or a crimp tube in the center. These are once again typically used to retain hair in the form of a ponytail or a braid. They can also be used to create buns, knots and chignons. comes hair rings. Out of, this, out of all the items in this entire list, hair rings are more decorative than functional. These are small rings, sometimes also beads that are used to embellish and decorate sections of hair. These could be thin braids or portions of hair that are later combined into a ponytail or a bun, hair ties and streamers. A lot of these hair accessories can do damage to the hair by breaking them. Hence, hair ties are used. Hair ties are pieces of ribbons or cloth or even cords and ropes that are used to keep your hair in place. Streamers are ribbon extensions that can be added to either ponios or hairbands in order to add a more festive look to your hairstyle. The final item on this list are ribbons and bows. Once again, ribbons and bows come under the category of hair ties. They are also used to keep your hair in place while adding an element of whimsy to your hair. Traditional Indian Hair Accessories In the ancient times, Uttariya, an upper cloth typically worn on the body, would also be worn on the head by both men and women. Sculptures from the Mauryan period of Yakshis are beautiful examples of printed and embroidered Uttariyas that were worn on the head as decorative accessories. A variety of turbans such as Ushnisha and Mauli were also worn in this period. Embellishments like Mauli Bandha and Maulimani were used to decorate these turbans. The long hair of Indian women through ages has been curled, braided or teased to create fantastical hairstyles. Flowers have been abundantly worn to cover hair partitions. Hair nets such as Ratna Jhala that is net of gemstones, Mukta Jhala that is net of pearls were worn even in the Gupta period. Many 20th century Indian movies in historical and mythological genres have portrayed examples of such embellishments in their character styling. Just a little has changed in the usage of traditional hair accessories in India. What was earlier worn on an everyday basis is now reserved for ceremonies, festivals and celebrations. Accessories such as the Chudamani, that is Rakudi, are used to both decorate and protect the crown. Pins with screws or spiral pins were used to hold hair buns in place. False hair called Sauri is braided and attached with tassels in the end. They are known by many such names such as Kunjalam, Kunjam or Parande. Tale Saman is a set of hair ornaments including the Neti Pattai and Chandran Suryan, that is, focals that look like the sun and moon, that are worn by both dancers and brides in South India. More details on hair jewellery and hair accessories will be discussed in the Unit 5 of this course, where we talk about jewellery that adorns the human body from head to toe.
almost every summer forecast you will find stripes and florals on trend so in between this as a fun quirky interpretation bows are omnipresent so in this tutorial i am going to show you how to create a quirky hair clip by creating a ribbon bow ribbon bow hair clip here are the materials that you require i am using a black crocodile clip as a base for this project you can use almost any sort of a clip slide or a barret for this project i would also be using a gross grain ribbon a striped ribbon trim and a plain gross grain ribbon you can also supplement gross grain ribbons with satin ribbons or any other kind of ribbon that you fancy other than this i would be using a sewing needle and a thread and then my trusty old glue gun to begin with you must decide whether you want to create a single bow or a double bow for this project i'm going to be only creating a single bow so i have cut around 8 inches of ribbon and i have cinched the edges cinching means lightly showing the edges of the ribbon in fire in order to melt and fuse the edges now this is a temporary finish if you want a more neater finish you can always double fold and hem so now that i've cinched this ribbon i'm going to fold it in half like this the final fold will be a double fold because i want it to look neat using my needle and thread i'm going to sew running stitches where all the edges overlap the reason i'm doing this running stitch is to create an accordion pleat an accordion pleat is one where some of the layers are on top and some of it is at the bottom so you get a big tight bow like this you pull the thread wrap the thread a few times around the bow turn it around and sew it in place don't worry if your bow looks a little frumpy at this moment so we are not going to leave this unattended i'm going to take my gross grain ribbon and create an envelope sort of a cover like this once i do this i would measure how much ribbon is required and then cut measure your gross grain ribbon and cut how much ever you want if you want you could also cinch this now place your ribbon in the center like this fold slightly pull and sew the finished edge now there are many different ways of finishing this ribbon either the entire finished portion can be glued on to the clip like this or you could also insert this portion of the crocodile part on your clip before you sew it 
that is precisely what I am going to do. I am going to take my needle and thread. I am going to knot it. I am going to attach only one side of the ribbon. Like this. Be mindful that the sewing is not visible on the top side. You can do this sewing with easy running stitches. So once this is done, this is simply tacked in place. Pull the ribbon. Fold in such a way that you are creating a loop. And then sew it. When you are sewing, it will be prudent to do a blind hem at this corner. Move on. Continue with the blind hem. So that your stitches are not visible on the back side. As well as the front. So you've completely sewn it shut and it looks very neat both from the front as well as the back. When you're knotting it also, knot in the in-between layers, one or two knots as you wish and take it like that. Now your bow is ready. As you can see there, there is a loop inside like this. So what I'm going to do now is to take my crocodile clip, apply and decide which side, how do I want the bow to look? Do I want it to look like this or do I want it to look like this? So if I want it to be vertical, I would have, would have to add another loop here in order to make sure that it goes inside. But because I want it to be horizontal like this, the loop that I have already created works. So I'm going to take this, apply, a tiny bit of hot glue. Be sure to open the crocodile clip. Create the tubing and then push it inside. Now your clip is ready. When it is worn in your hair, it's going to have a little less traction than what a crocodile clip would normally do because you have hidden most of its teeth here. So if you do not want that, you can also glue your bow or your ribbon or your rosette just on top like this as you see in store-bought embellished clips. Here the teeth of the crocodile clip are pretty much visible from end to end. I hope you enjoyed making this simple ribbon bow based hair clips there are so many more variations that you can do with the same technique you can use multiple ribbons and create multiple bows you can do three four five at a time you can create rosettes using ribbon bows that look like this in order to create a more elaborate hair piece while a bow clip like this is even suitable for older age groups bigger bows and bigger rosettes are typically reserved for children and teenage girls. In the module on decorative trims in unit 2, we had talked about 
the functions and need and scope of rosettes. In this particular tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a rosette using gross grain ribbon. We will then apply this on to a barret in order to create a very beautiful hair accessory. Ribbon rosette hair clip. Here are the materials that you would require. You can choose one or two ribbons of your choice. For this particular project, I am choosing two gross grain ribbons, one in a lavender color and another in a rose color. Then you would require a small piece of felt for the backing. You would also require your barret or crocodile clip or any other sort of base that you are going to use to create this hair clip. You would require some pearls or beads or even buttons for the center of the rosette. And of course, you would require sewing needle and matching thread. Now let's start this project. I'm going to be using two colors of gross grain ribbon because I want a rosette that has a couple of layers. Now if you want only a single layer or if you want a flower of a single color, you can just use one particular ribbon. You can also supplement gross grain ribbons with twill tape, satin ribbon and any other kind of ribbon that you like. I'm going to just start I'm going to just start by threading my needle and thread like this. I'm going to be making a very small knot at the center. I'm going to make a tacking stitch so that the layers do not separate. Do not worry, this end will get hidden as we finish the rosette. Take the needle back up once again. And using running stitch, gather this length of ribbon. Make small running stitches. See, is it gathers as I go. Now the length of the ribbon will depend upon how big you want your flower to be. For this particular project, you can use from anywhere between 6 to 10 inches of ribbon. I am using about 8 inches of gross grain ribbon. Can you see that the rosette is forming as I go? you come to the end make sure that you are not leaving too much of a gap in the center now this extra space in the end is for you to create a backing if you do not require a backing and if you think your barret or your hair clip is wide enough you can avoid this and you can gather till the end So gather as much as possible. Now there comes a time where you have to sew both these layers together. So what do I do is that I fold the initial starting point so that it faces the underside and then sew it shut. Now because of the thickness of my ribbon, there 
is a huge gap in the center. Now this gap is not very appealing. In order to fill this gap, I am going to be using pearl beads. So I am going to be stringing a couple of pearl beads on to my sewing needle and thread and then I am going to start sewing them. You can add any sort of embellishments do you want. Just be slow with this process. You can even add a big button or a big sequin or any sort of stone that you have here, even you don't even have to sew it. You can even simply glue it if it has a base. So can you see that I'm doing lines of pearl beads? It is better to sew two or three beads at a time. This will make sure that your rosette is really strong and it will be durable with your daily wear and tear. Once you have finished attaching all the embellishments that you want like this, go to the back, knot it, take your thread to the other side where the ribbon end is visible, fold this ribbon end facing the front so you get a clean edge finish also at the back. If you choose two separate colors of ribbons like I have chosen today. The stitch might be sometimes visible. In order to avoid this, you can do a blind hem at the edges. Continue going until you come to the end. Leave the last half a centimeter or slightly less without sewing because only then it will look like a rosette otherwise it will look very flat in nature. So come back all the way through. And do your knots at the center. Now, when you are making rosettes of much larger sizes, you have to do something called as cross sewing or X sewing, which I am showing over here. For this particular rosette, this is not required. I am only showing this in case you want to do rosettes of bigger sizes. So, what I am doing is I am randomly sewing across the gap, bringing the edges closer together so that a background felt will not be seen from the back. Sorry, the background felt will not be seen from the front. So as you come to the end, can you see a crisscross happening here? You can knot the thread in place. Now your result is ready. Apart from being used as a hair accessory, it can be also used as a lapel pin. You can glue this onto a pin back along with the circle of felt 
and then you can happily wear it as a hat accessory or as a lapel pin or as a brooch on your jacket now i'm going to take this piece of felt trim it around so that it looks more of a rounded shape so this is going to come at the back now to attach my barret i have to make two slits onto my circle of felt so i'll fold my circle of felt in half and i would make approximately two half a centimeter slits this is to make sure that my barret goes in and out like this this ensures a very neat finish now this can be either attached through sewing or it can be attached through gluing you can use a rubber adhesive like fevi bond or you can use your glue gun to fix it while using your glue gun make sure that you apply very very less glue remove the stringers place it exactly where you want your barret to be placed and then press it down once again as it dries remove all the wax stringers out your barret is ready now people assume that glue guns are instantaneous and once the product is attached with the glue gun it can be worn immediately but a good rule of thumb is to make sure that any item that you created not just dries but also rests for a sufficient period of time before wearing this ensures that the piece that you have created is in a state of rest as you take to wear it this would make sure you have lesser breakages and your piece lasts for a really long time so after probably 15 to 20 minutes your barret is ready to be worn in this module we have seen uh, many different types of hair accessories that are available in the market uh they are all different not only on the kind of finishing that is seen that is the embellishment that is seen on top of them but also their mechanism for instance this is a barret but this is a barret that has an outer covering on it whereas this is a barret without a covering in the practical section of this particular module i'm going to walk you through some very easy to do hair accessories that you can do with a uh, limited trims and embellishments and you can create stunning products for yourself or items that you can give as gifts to others in this particular tutorial i'm going to walk you through the process of making a bridal pin to do this here are the materials that we require we require a ub u pin or a u bobby pin we require some four pearls or crystals you can also use some gold beads or metallic beads you can use crystals you can use any sort of bead that sparkles i am using pearls to create a classic bridal comb here you will also need thin wire i am i am going to be using 28 gauge artistic gold tone wire you can also use thicker slightly thicker wires that go up to 26 gauge or thinner wires that go up to 30 gauge now this wire will determine how heavy or dainty your bridal pin will look you also need a pair of nose pliers and wire cutters to help you cut the wire because this wire is extremely thin you could also use scissors to cut the wire
I'm going to begin by cutting a length of wire from the spoon. I'm going to be taking a longer length of wire so that if required I can cut and I can reuse it to create another pin. I'm taking about 16 inches. Holding both the ends in my hand, I will take a pearl bead and put it in the center. After that, I will slowly rotate my fingers, making two to three twists as I go. Once this twisting is done, I will separate the ends of the wire. Now, I will add another pearl on another side. First, I will lift a portion of the wire up so that I do have some give or some length of wire in order to twist it. So, I will twist this four to five times till I get the look that I require. I will repeat the same process on the other side also. Now, I am creating a structure that is known as a bead tree. You can also create other structures like flowers or animals. So I will add the bead and I will twist it as I go. Now you can see that I have created the center. Now if I want a bridal pin that is going to be very close to the hair. I can stop it here and I can wind it. But if I require a more elaborate tree, for instance, if this is going to come as the main ornamental pin for your bridal hair bun, then it can be much longer. These could be extra pins that can come on the sides of the hair just to add a little bit of oomph and flair. So I'm going to continue at this point and create a slightly bigger pin for you. The process is exactly the same. You can see that how I am creating branches of a tree. You can add uh, crystal beads, you can add metallic beads in the center or if you have any particular birthstone or a gift that is passed on uh, from your family members, you can also add that and make it as a part of your bridal hairdress.
ரெக்கார்ட் பண்ண ஆரம்பிக்கிறீங்க so you proceed until you make a branch or a tree of the size that you want in a pattern that you want i wanted a pattern where the branching is on both sides that is on both ends of my u pin so at this point i've brought my wire in the center i will keep my u pin here to make sure that it looks exactly the way that i want then i will once again separate the wire like this so that there is no more twist if it is required i will pass on one wire through the branches to make sure that the branching is safe and secure now for the next part of this tutorial i am going to be attaching this embellished piece to my bobby pin this i will do by simply wrapping the wire in place so far i have only been using my hands but now there comes a stage where you won't be able to get that pull just with your hands you need very firm tightly wrapped loops which does not damage your hair so you will need to do a couple of loops or wraps and then pull them tight with your plier so you continue to do this until your embellishment is tightly fixed remember that this is going to go on your hair so if there are any loose stray bits of wire that is just hanging there without being properly wrapped it is going to snag your hair and cause hair breakage in the process as we have discussed in the practical sections in the previous unit quality is of paramount importance when creating any piece of designer accessory so you continue to wrap this as neatly as possible and pull it tight so at this point you can see that your branches or your pearl tree has been firmly secured to your u pin you can add more lengths of wire and make this bigger or narrower as you proceed but i am going to complete this particular pin here to complete it i will make sure that i have wrapped very evenly once again i am going to take the excess wire wrap around any one of the branches that is there and then feed cut the wire and then feed it into the bead i will cut the extra wire on the top making sure that no bit of wire remains outside to snag your hair now i will continue the same process with the other side of the wire so once again i am feeding it through the pearl as you can see here pulling it out tight with the plier 
and I will cut it as close as possible. Now this process would have misshaped my branches a little bit. I will go back and spread them out exactly in the way that I want them to look. Using the same technique of twisting the wire and wrapping it, I have created a bridal pin, a main pin, along with a supplementary pin for you. Now these can be added to all sorts of hairstyles like buns, rolls and plates. In case you're putting it onto plates, then you can always choose a bobby pin or a U-pin that is half this size. You also get thin pins in the market. To add on to this, you can also use pearl pins that are available in a lot of stationery stores which have a pearlized head to a ball pin. Put together, these would be very effective in creating a simple yet elegant and beautiful bridal hairdo. With this, we come to the end of this module. Here are some of the points for you in conclusion. Hair has always been man's crowning glory. Consistent efforts have been taken to style and groom hair through the course of history and that includes the use of wigs and hair pieces. Wigs are constructed using two different types of material, natural and synthetic. We have also seen that wigs can be full lace, front lace or monofilament wigs. Weaves and hair extensions are ways and means to add length and volume to hair. While we weave is sewn onto the cornrows created on the scalp, extensions are attached with an adhesive. We have also seen that all these methods require good maintenance and aftercare. In this unit, we looked at hair accessories that help secure hair in a hairstyle and embellish it. Hair accessories can be categorized as pins, combs, clips and ties. Indian hair accessories include false hair braids, braid coverings, tassels and hair jewelry. At the end of this module, we have also looked at practical demonstrations on how you can easily create hair accessories. I have demonstrated how to create a ribbon bow clip. I have shown you how easy it is to make a rosette out of gross grain ribbon and then attach it onto a barret. In the third tutorial, I have demonstrated on the process of creating bridal hair pins using wire and some four pearls. I hope that these tutorials would be extremely beneficial to you. You can explore more on the same lines and create many other different types of hair accessories. These rosettes, bows and pins can also multitask as other elements. For instance, the bow can be used to create a brooch or even a corsage. In the upcoming units, we will see how accessories are worn or used in other parts of the body. You might come across these trims and embellishments once again then.